Oh. Hi. I'm Lone Candle. Over half a million people in the United States are homeless, and this count has been well over the half million mark for a long time. In 2007, over 647,000 people were homeless. Fortunately, before COVID, that number was declining. But even so, as of 2019, 567,715 people were homeless. That number is likely a major undercount. The number could be well over 2 million because it's hard to find every homeless person and officially count them. The greatest impacts of homelessness are on the homeless themselves. They often sleep with a lack of comfort and an excess of filth, while being treated by passer buyers as either pariahs or like they don't exist. Being without shelter can be hot, it can be cold, it can be hungry. It's dangerous, as the homeless are vulnerable to theft, assaults, and rape. Not having the ability to take care of oneself is harmful to one's mental well-being. We shouldn't wish the psychological and physical effects of homelessness on anyone. Among people living in New York City shelters, the mortality rate is two to three times greater than the city's general population. Homelessness also affects society in a variety of ways. Each non-working homeless person is someone not being a productive member of society. They must live by begging, stealing, and charity rather than productivity. Efforts to feed, shelter, and care for the homeless are expensive. Their high use of acute medical care is a burden upon us all. Studies have tried to estimate the cost per homeless person. One breakdown was 53% of cost from health care, 34% from criminal justice, and 13% from other social welfare services. Several cities have allowed long-term homeless encampments that ruin city areas with trash. Businesses must deal not only with the crime, but the homeless in the way of their shops. When homeless congregate in large camps, these camps often turn into a den of crimes. Drugs are sold and used, and crime upon the non-homeless in the area go up as those desperate or intoxicated assault and steal from others. Violence often erupts over drug territory. Controlling for observable differences, homeless people are 60% more likely to commit a violent crime and 30% more likely to commit a property crime. Costs of security and shoplifting that harm businesses are often passed through to the consumer, like a hidden tax. Since 2007, the general trend has been a decline in homelessness. However, certain large cities have seen increases. Homelessness has increased in New York City, Los Angeles County, Seattle, San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, and Sacramento. However, being a large and growing city does not fate one for growing homelessness. Phoenix, Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth, San Diego, and Atlanta-Fulton County have seen 14-54% to 54 declines. New York City and Los Angeles County represent 6% of the U.S. population, but a quarter of the 2017 homeless population. Local causes may differ. For example, 62% of the increase in New York City is families with children under 18, while in Los Angeles, this is 7% of the increase. The most cited numbers for U.S. homelessness are point-in-time counts. Every year, on the same day in January, people go out and count the number of homeless, searching for them all over the community. This, of course, won't be totally accurate and likely misses many unsheltered homeless, who the counters do not find. The real count of homeless may be 2.5 to 10 times higher. However, these numbers are the best we have as far as nationwide numbers counted with the same methodology in different communities. While the homeless living in shelters or on the streets have been declining, if you count people doubled up, meaning those who have lost their housing and are currently living with someone else, then homelessness has been increasing since 2010. An important distinction among homeless people is those who have lived on the street for a year or more and those who are homeless for lesser periods of time. The chronically, long-term, homeless 
tend to be drug addicted or mentally ill, while the short term tend not to be. A majority of homeless are not chronically homeless and are not addicted to drugs or mentally ill. This may seem wrong, but most visible homeless are not representative of the total population. Obviously, the causes and solutions to the two types of populations will differ. So, it's important to keep these different groups in mind when thinking about how to limit homelessness and about what created the problem in the first place. Those who are not suffering from drugs or mental illness need help getting on their feet. But then, they can quickly walk on their own again. Those with mental issues will need greater care. The chronically homeless make up about 15% of the total homeless. I'll also make a distinction between sheltered and unsheltered. Sheltered homeless are those without housing, but who currently are offered a temporary place to stay, like an emergency shelter. The unsheltered are sleeping outside. Why are so many people homeless even in pre-pandemic America? The causes fall into two categories, immediate and environmental. The immediate causes are unfortunate events, drugs, and mental illness, while environmental forces are expensive housing and low incomes. Because the majority of the homeless aren't drug addicted or mentally ill, unfortunate events play a huge role in homelessness. There are plenty of interviews with people who seem like sane, hardworking people who had a series of bad events that screwed them. Sometimes we're talking about young people who had troubled, often abusive relationships with their parents. Other times, it's women running from domestic abuse. Health crises, job losses, and divorces have led people to not have the money to pay rent, forcing them on the streets. Sometimes a combination of the above factors creates the trouble. One Minnesota study found that 35% of homeless women said abuse was a cause of their homelessness. A 2017 survey of the United States found that 41,000 of the homeless were under 25. Often trauma creates youth homelessness, LGBTQ, special needs or disabled, and pregnant or parenting young people are also more likely to lose housing. Homelessness can also result from bad financial decisions. This may not be misfortune imposed from the outside like some other causes, but ultimately is still unfortunate that one made such mistakes. And these mistakes can contribute to homelessness. Former prisoners may have fallen behind on employable skills, if they had them in the first place. And the fact that they were in prison often gets them rejected for both jobs and apartments. One study found that having been in jail or prison makes one ten times more likely to experience homelessness. Young people who become too old to stay in foster care sometimes end up homeless. A study looking at the Midwest found that 30% of people who were in foster care as children were homeless at some time before age 24. And 25% of young former foster children in California live in precarious housing situations. It's hard to maintain a job and pay rent when you're mentally ill. Similarly, it's hard to do so when addicted to powerful drugs. Some people get addicted and then that causes them to become homeless. Others have unfortunate events that cause them to be living rough and then there they find drugs and their newfound addictions keep them homeless. Since the 1960s and 70s, the number of beds at state or county mental health facilities have gone from over 400,000 to fewer than 100,000. With less institutional beds, mentally ill people are more likely to end up on the streets. According to some data, half of America's unsheltered homeless say mental health or substance abuse contributed to their becoming homeless. The Los Angeles Times found that two out of three Los Angeles County street living homeless have a psychological or substance abuse disorder. These numbers are higher than official statistics that don't count mental disorders not considered long term. A 2019 University of California Los Angeles report found that 75% of unsheltered homeless have substance abuse problems, 
78% have mental health disorders, and 84% have issues with physical health. Meth use is on the rise and is a particularly damaging drug. It's also tough to treat because there's no substitute drug to help wean people off the addiction. We need to be careful not to exaggerate the drug addiction cause. Most homeless people are not drug addicted or mentally ill. The U.S. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has the percentage of sheltered homeless adults with chronic substance issues at 34.7%. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development said that 36% of chronically homeless had a chronic substance abuse issue, severe mental illness, or both. The National Coalition for the Homeless put the percentage of U.S. homeless dependent on harmful chemicals that are not alcohol at 26%, and those alcohol-dependent at 38%, while their number for the percentage of mentally ill homeless people is 33%. The scientific research going back to the 1930s tends to find that drugs can contribute to causing homelessness, and homelessness can facilitate new or increased drug use. Being homeless is stressful as shit, and that leads some people to fall into drugs to take away the pain. Drugs can even have practical effects. Stimulants can help one be aware and awake when a person is in danger. Alcohol and opioids can provide comfort and limit the feeling of cold temperatures. In an interview, one homeless man said it's hard to get off drugs on the streets due to easy access and the stress of the streets. Quipping, who wants to be homeless sober? The U.S. Bureau of the Census had a 1996 survey that found a low percentage of the homeless who had claimed drugs caused their homelessness, but a high percentage of them who currently have a drug issue. In a small 2009 London survey of homeless people, 80% said they started using at least one new drug since they became homeless. A 2008 Melbourne, Australia study of homeless social service clients reported 43% of them having substance use issues, but two-thirds of these got their drug problems after they became homeless. Additionally, younger people were more likely to have gained their drug problem after losing housing. A small study of homeless in Cook County, Illinois, used techniques to find evidence for causal relationships. They found that it isn't usually drugs themselves that directly cause homelessness, but the role drugs play in weakening social and institutional connections, and having less of these makes one more vulnerable to homelessness. Drugs themselves can cause homelessness if someone isn't able to function, but so can society's responses to drugs. Some homeless were kicked out of their homes because partners or parents disapproved of their drug use, or their jobs because employers disapproved. Unfortunately, many studies find correlations but are not good at teasing out the causes of homelessness. Detailed qualitative studies that try to understand the complicated causes of individual people's homelessness often find multiple causes that affect each other in different ways. For example, Personal isolation and family discord can facilitate both drug use and homelessness. Sometimes losing a home reduces drug use due to no time or safe place to do it, and other times depression and street access exacerbates drug use. Troubles in one's life can lead to both a precarious financial situation and drug use. Both of these can contribute to homelessness. Addictions make it difficult to help people. People don't want to go to shelters because they can't do drugs there. Sometimes the addicted just want to keep doing drugs wherever they are. While most people are homeless due to unfortunate events or mental issues, you will find some homeless who really just don't want to work and are lazy. This is a super small minority. Living on the streets is not just uncomfortable, but dangerous. No one in their right mind would prefer this to working a job. But that statement isn't quite literal, because you can find people who claim to have chosen homelessness. Once homeless, it's hard to get out. You don't just have to worry about arrest, being assaulted or stolen from, food, water, shelter, and transportation, but also keeping IDs, birth certificates, and other documents that may be needed to get a job. 
Just getting a social security card can be a huge hassle that requires going to different places around an area. If one is homeless without transportation, that's hard. Making oneself workplace presentable isn't easy without a home. Thus, most homeless are at a great disadvantage in gaining and maintaining employment. Why are so many people becoming homeless when they're willing and able to work? Why can these numbers consistently be so high in both good and bad times? How can misfortunes so easily trigger homelessness? In brief, rent is too damn high and pay is too damn low. There's a clear statistical relationship between rent and homelessness. However, the relationship is modest, so rent alone doesn't explain it. Also, the homeless rates of New York City and Los Angeles County are far above the homeless-to-rent trend line, meaning their extreme numbers are not caused by rent alone. For some, a big rent increase is basically the same as an eviction, and there may not be other low-income housing available with an open room. In 2015, a UCSF study interviewed 350 homeless people in Oakland. Almost half of the older interviewees had never been homeless before. People 50 and over who become homeless for the first time are unlikely to have drug or mental issues. They'll look like shit after getting little sleep and possibly getting attacked on a street, but they didn't really need deep social help. They just needed help paying rent, or cheaper rent in the first place. A 2012 study concluded that a $100 increase in rent in large cities correlates with a 15% increase in homelessness. Over the last 20 years, median rent has trended up, but median renter household income is almost flat. Part of the housing affordability problem is that many high-paying jobs centralize in certain locations, and these high-paying industries attract a lot of lower-paying services too. And it is hard to cram all these people into a small geographic location. It's good to remember that most homeless are not chronically homeless, nor are they drug addicted or mentally ill. And the big picture factors making all kinds of people more likely to end up homeless are high rents and low incomes. So what the hell can we do about it? Solutions range from proper policing and criminal justice, aid in getting people back into houses, and help with mental or addiction needs, rent subsidies, wage subsidies, and building more damn houses so the price of housing can come down. 